Okay. All right. Uh, a warm welcome, Ridla. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, Ridla is currently leading the technical content team at uh, Grey Orange. Um, she's a very seasoned writer and uh, she's very interested in uh, technology. And uh, outside of work, Mirzila is also very passionate about art and uh, operates uh, her own school, uh, Lalit Kalakshetra. And uh, I will let the floor be yours. Mirzila, you're on. Thank you so much, Mansi, for that uh, lovely introduction. Hello, everyone. So I'm here today to um, make uh, your a journey as a tech writer, a little more interesting by adding some spices of, uh, of code. Uh, so usually I have seen when I lead teams of uh, writers, uh, initially they feel a little inhibited when it comes to coding, but it's just a matter of time. And uh, remember that um, you, anyone, not only you, even for me, um, we feel uncomfortable only till the point where we do not understand something. The moment we understand something, we feel very comfortable with it. So today's session is all about to bring you into that comfort zone, make you uh, build a relationship with uh, coding, uh, very simple HTML coding, and how you can leverage chat GPT to excel at that and uh, you know use it to your advantage at work or to create your portfolio. So let me quickly share my screen so that we can get started. So today's topic is how we can use ChatGPT to be able to learn uh, HTML and CSS. So let's get going. So uh, the objective of this webinar is to share my insights as to how it helped me and how it can help any tech writer uh, get an edge, um, whether it be at work or in an interview or uh, in general, how you can stay ahead of others. I will be also sharing some resources that you can refer and it will help you a lot with the building your own static website. We are not going to discuss anything about, uh, you know, using APIs, building a complex website, but a simple uh, static website, how ChatGPT can help you with that. And also we will discuss a few pointers as to how you can uh, leverage it for your growth for at workplace or even, uh, you know, in your career journey and how to stay ahead of competition. So let's get going. So when it comes to HTML and CSS, uh, they are like um, siblings. So if you only work with HTML and you create a page, then it looks incomplete, right? But when you add CSS, it completes the look of your web page. So today, when we are talking about HTML, it is more about how you can customize the functionalities of your document. So I will also share a sample um, page from the uh, tool that we are using at Gray Orange, uh, the help authoring tool that we are using at uh, Gray Orange, it's called Click Help. How knowledge of uh, HTML and CSS helped me go beyond the parameters of a tech writer and how I could add more interesting features into my document. I'll just show that. Uh, and of course, uh, once you are tweaking the code of uh, the HTML, you are also uh, customizing the look and feel of your document. Um, and by the end of uh, this particular session, I'm hoping that you will definitely go ahead and try a little bit of coding to get comfortable with it. And uh, last but not the least, I will also share some very interesting tips and guidance as to how you can build your own portfolio. All these activities you can do very simply, very easily using ChatGPT. So let's get going. So when we are looking at ChatGPT, 
the most important part of chat gpt is engineering prompt so there is a new field altogether called prompt engineering if you go to udemy and you search for this keyword called prompt engineering you will get couple of uh, um couple of uh, trainings uh, look at the review look at the stars and uh, you can just wait for the sale period on udemy and maybe it will hardly cost um, around 400 rupees so you should if you are interested to leverage the full potential of chat gpt you should definitely take a look at the prompt engineering courses because uh, when we are using chat gpt like google then we are not be, uh, using or utilizing even a fraction of uh, the potential of this ai tool now you might ask me, but Mridula at work, uh, ChatGPT mm -hmm. is banned and we cannot use it. Don't use it at work uh, in your personal laptop or desktop. Just open a free account and uh, try to start using ChatGPT if you are not already using it. Also remember, anything you... Pay Okay, before I uh, make that point, I want to tell you Chat GPT is an AI tool, which means that it is um, embedded with machine learning. And machine learning means that whatever you are feeding into the system, you are actually teaching that system new tricks. So it is almost like you have a small child in your house and uh, every day you are giving the child new information, the child retains it and tries to use that information in its own way. So that is intelligence of the child, right? And we are talking about the artificial intelligence. So you have to be very careful what you are putting into chat GPT. You must have already um, learned about the Samsung scenario where uh, some coders put some code into chat GPT and it got exposed to the competitors. So please be very careful about what you are copying and pasting. So instead of that, you can use the approach I'm going to discuss uh, in today's webinar that will help you use ChatGPT like a guide or a mentor where you are depending on ChatGPT to give you the information instead of you giving information to ChatGPT. Let us see this one. So first is give me structure so these are prompts okay these are actual prompts give me a structure for the portfolio of a technical writer right so i'm going to uh, just reduce uh, this one from full screen so you can see my tabs here so i'm i'm just switching over to the chat gpt tab here So here, uh, right next to my um, profile photo, this is what I type. Give me a structure for the portfolio of a technical writer. And it has given me a beautiful structure, OK? So it has given me a great structure. Now I'm seeing, now I'm refining. So it has given me a structure. It has given me some output. Now we have to refine it. Again, you have to think of chat GPT like a small child. If you give multiple messages, multiple instructions to a small child, it will completely, you know, go berserk and the child will not be able to do anything properly. Instead of that, you give the simplest task first and slowly try to refine it and get to the more complex part of it. So in my next prompt, I just said, now, add a section to include my experience in dev documentation. So you can see that I did not say now, uh, you know, in, in the um, structure that you gave me, uh, add this section. I did not say all those things. Why? Because chat GPT preserves the context. That is the real power of chat GPT, that it can work in iterations. You cannot do that in Google. So first I asked it to give me a structure. Then I refined the structure saying that now you add a section to include my experience in dev documentation. And immediately it gives me, remember these are not uh, to be copied and pasted. It is only giving you guidance. But apart from guidance, if you tell uh, chat GPT, give me a sample portfolio. It will give you a sample portfolio.
So here uh, you uh, you need not copy and paste it when you when you get the sample structure. Um, you can always use that structure and write it in your own words. Now, anything that is personal to you, for example, um, you want to, you know, understand what are the better ways of writing your introduction. You can copy that kind of information into chat GPT. There is no harm in that. But anything that is very personal to you, like uh, your financial statement or some code at work, those are a strict no-no. But uh, simple um, information that you want to write better, especially in your portfolio, you can always um, ask, uh, you know, copy and paste it here and ask it to do this. Give me a simpler version of the following text. Okay, like this you can give. And then you can also say that has a Flesher score of 60%. Now Flesher score is um, the readability score. So ideally, uh, a sixth grade score would be best and that will be uh, around 60%. So when you add a Flesher score also to your content, what it does is that it will ensure that a sixth grader can understand what you have written. So that will entail simplifying. If you have used any very uh, any complex sentences, it will simplify those. So these are the, some of the ways that you can totally leverage a chat GPT to build a beautiful portfolio content for yourself. And then let me get back to um, the presentation. So the last point also we covered that uh, we can always uh, rewrite, help, uh, take the help of chat GPT to rewrite an existing content. Now let us um, take a closer look at online portfolio creation. So before you start creating, you already uh, saw that ChatGPT can give you the structure, right? So you can keep that structure. Now you have to sit and decide that um, based on the structure uh, suggested by uh, ChatGPT, how many pages do you want all that information on a single page or you want to make multiple tabs and divide that uh, information under multiple tabs? So what kind of information structure you in information architecture you want to implement? Now, I'll tell you an advantage of this exercise. When you are thinking in a more structured way as to how you are going to present your information on the uh, static website that you are creating as your portfolio, you are also displaying your ability to think as an information architect. Right. So when you are uh, sending in your resume to the hiring manager and you put in a link for your portfolio in there, you can also mention that this portfolio showcases my ability as an information architect, as a writer and blah, blah, like whatever you want to add here. Right. So apart from information architecture, another very catchy term and very important term is taxonomy. And taxonomy is all about how you are going to categorize your information. Taxonomy is extremely important when it comes to searching information on the website. So if you are not um, categorizing your uh, information, if you are not uh, adding tags to your information, then um, searching for that particular information will um, return so many results that uh, the um, person, the user will get confused as to which document will um, answer the question, right? So taxonomy is something that you need to have a basic idea of. So for that also, you can just rely on chat GPT. You can just uh, uh, type into chat GPT saying that suggest a great taxonomy for my portfolio website. So something like that you can add. Now you have to um, think if you're going to add multimedia, are you going to add your photograph or you're going to add a video introduction of yours? 
and then you have to see where exactly they will fit in. Would you like to put it on the landing page or you will put it on one of the tabs? How you are going to host your web page? So there is no use just sitting and writing HTML and CSS if the, you cannot host it. So you would always need a hosting server where you can upload your uh, HTML file, your graphic files, and then put them all together and display it to the user. Then only that link will get generated. So one very good and powerful tool is GitHub. So if you use GitHub, you can host your uh, static website for free. Um, otherwise, there are other domain providers like GoDaddy. And uh, if, if you ask ChatGPT, suggest some, um, you know, web hosting services, it will give you a long list. And then you can see which, where, which one you can go for, which pricing works for you and things like that. Now, remember... Whichever um, provider, something like GoDaddy you choose, they themselves will give you a beautiful tool to create portfolio. And if you are using that kind of tool to create your portfolio, you are actually not being able to use your knowledge of HTML. This form of uh, portfolio creation or static web page creation is actually going to teach you um, more than basic level of uh, HTML. So if you think uh, just adding head, uh, body, uh, and some information in there is HTML, then building a portfolio for yourself is going to take you to the next level, right? Because you are also going to add CSS and that will um, give you a complete uh, experience of how to build a static web page. Now, uh, think of how the HR and hiring manager will view and navigate this web page. So, uh, if you have ever applied for any job on uh, Nokri or LinkedIn, you will see that they will ask you to upload a PDF file or a doc file. They will um, sometimes they also ask to put any uh, link. Nowadays, they do because they know that writers are pretty tech savvy and they have their own uh, portfolio pages. So, if you see that particular option to add a link please go ahead and add the link of your portfolio and um, yeah, it will the hiring manager or HR can look at your portfolio how you have made it right now when we are talking of wireframes there is a reason why this um, slide is blank it is because wireframes require um, some designing tools like figma where you can uh, actually design the overall layout of your web page and uh, then proceed with the coding part of it as to how you are going to place the different parts. So wireframe is an entirely different topic. It has, uh, ChatGPT will not be able to help you with wireframes because it is more on the graphics side, right? Now, let us look at some great reference materials here. Um, and the first comes the W3 schools. So uh, if you want to learn JavaScript or HTML or CSS, W3 schools has excellent uh, resources. Not only that, uh, when you search for any information, they have excellent search engines. They have their own paid uh, services also. So you can actually do a course through W3 schools. So apart from uh, depending on chat GPT, because here is the thing, chat GPT is not perfect. And that is good news for us writers. Because, uh, you know, I just see chat GPT as a racing horse. And we don't need to compete with the racing horse because we are human beings, right? So we don't need to compete with the racing horse. What we can do is learn to ride on top of the racing horse, right? Then even we will pick up more speed and the racing horse will also get a uh, direction. So I, I always look at chat GPT uh, with that analogy. Um, now I just need to uh, share a little bit of trivia here about me. I am by nature um, an early adopter. And who are early adopters? When they look at, um, you know, when they see some upcoming technology, they want to read about it. They want to use it. They want to get the whole feel of it. So I am kind of uh, in that zone of early adopters. So we, before ChatGPT came into picture, 
I had used an AI tool called Jarvis. So I don't know if any of you are fans of Avengers. So I'm a big Marvel fan. I love, I, I don't remember how many times I have watched Avengers. So Jarvis was actually the AI assistant of Iron Man. So, uh, so that name itself was very interesting for me. So I, uh, you know, I just got a trial account and it was so exciting for me because I've never seen something like that before. And I was like, man, this is giving me such amazing copy but it was it was failing big time with technical content okay because it was not designed for technical writing projects it was designed for content uh, writing that is used for marketing so you write a blurb you put it into Jarvis and ask Jarvis to fine-tune it and it will give you excellent copies and it will suggest different version that is the best part of Jarvis that it will give you different versions and you can select whichever you love so um, Jarvis was released way before ChatGPT became popular. So when ChatGPT came into picture, I knew that there is nothing to be scared of because these are the AI tools that are not going to um, you know, affect the technical writing industry anytime soon. Um, not only that, the kind of output they give. So if I ask Jarvis to give me content, okay, I want content on, um, say, warehouse industry. So the kind of content Jarvis would give me or ChatGPT will give me is very mechanical. It, it has no flavor to it. There is no nothing exciting about it. And uh, whichever versions... Uh, so say it has given us a version and then we are asking it, can you give us more versions? So it will give you four or five versions. And you will see that every time you ask it to generate content for you, it will give you similar type of uh, generation because it is using an algorithm. But we human beings, we do not use algorithms uh, like that. What we do is that we immediately sit and think of our experience, our experience in life, our experience interacting with users, our experience interacting with uh, so many other people in our lives. So we bring in all those human experience uh, into our writing and make the writing uh, literally connect with the user. So please never forget, forget that, that uh, do not use chat GPT to give you content. Always write, give, ask chat GPT to give you the structure, use that structure and build your own content. I, and I promise you that it is going to be way better than the versions this AI tool is going to give you. Now, having said that, um, HTML5, up.net. This is um, this is the um, website that you can go to that will give you excellent responsive structures for web pages. You, you can pull it up if you are sitting in front of your laptop. You can just pull it up and you will see that they have lovely um, lovely templates. Uh, you know that you can use. Now, what is a responsive page? I'm sure many of you might already know it. Responsive pages are device agnostic. So today I'm sitting on my MacBook and I'm creating a web page. Tomorrow, I want to um, you know, share it with a, a hiring manager who does not have a system in front of them. So they are using their phone. So my web page should not look weird on, on that phone of theirs, right? It should look equally appealing to them. So that is um, responsive web pages that can uh, display content in a, in a very um, a structured way, independent of the devices. So it doesn't matter what, which device you are using it. It could be a very big screen. Still, it will look um, good. So that is what is called device agnostic. So this HTML5 templates, uh, this particular site gives you uh, templates that are device agnostic or HTML uh, mm. responsive. Now, why I am uh, suggesting this is because although uh, this one is also a template and you this is specifically for uh, GitHub. So you just have to upload the files in GitHub. But to tweak and add your information into them, you need knowledge of HTML, right? So even if you use HTML5, yes, 
I can say that 70% of the task has been completed in the template, but the remaining 30% can showcase your understanding of HTML. Um, the CSS is already designed, so I don't think you will need any changes in the CSS, but yes, you can always tweak the CSS if you learn CSS and um, see you have a logo and uh, you can use that colors you have used in the logo uh, in the templates. And of course, then there is the GitHub account, which is uh, free. So they have to, both paid version and also free version. In the free version, whenever you generate a website, it will be public. But if in the paid version, when you generate a static website, it will be private, which means unless and until I share the link of my page with you, you will not be able to see on that page. You cannot simply Google it and uh, view that page. You need that specific link. Now, having said that, I have um, I have uh, promised you that I will show you how I have used HTML to uh, enhance the documents I uh, create using ClickHelp. That is the uh, help authoring tool that I use at uh, Gray Orange. Uh, and uh, to be honest, that is one of the best tools in 20, um, I mean, now I'm right like 23 years into this industry and I feel that it is one of the best tools that I'm using. So, um, So here again, I will show you this in uh, after a couple of slides. We are on the eighth slide. So use ChatGPT if you want to build the portal from scratch. So please do try this. Yes, HTML5 template is there, but before you delve into that, just as a trial, you can just uh, give this particular prompt on ChatGPT. Give me the HTML code to create a landing page with the following tabs, simple, okay? and it will give you the basic HTML code. Now let us see some of these. And before uh, we get into these details, I'll just quickly show you some of the use cases of uh, the knowledge of HTML uh, in your um, career as a uh, tech writer. So this is a sample website uh, that I created using Click Help. And you can see that this is a page, okay? This is one of the uh, landing page that I have designed using HTML. And when I click on this one of the, so you can see that uh, when I'm hovering over each box, it is showing a small animation as well as uh, there is a light change of color too. So all these things are done using HTML and um, CSS. And there is a very um, light use of JavaScript. So this is a web page that I created. I'm going to click on this. And it launches a web page. Uh, one of my document, right? So here you can see that how I leveraged my knowledge in HTML to actually bring a difference in the way uh, customers or users will be able to view the documentation because this one is not out of the box. It is just loading. So the card layout that you saw is not by using any template. It is not out of the box. Click help does not give this kind of a layout. It is completely 100% uh, HTML code, right? So you can also brainstorm and see that uh, how to make your documentation beautiful by um, leveraging. Let me uh, take you to the home page here. And you will see that in the home page, how I have designed, this is also not out of the box. The fact that at the top there is a graphic and there is a bar and there is this one and there is this button that becomes black when I'm hovering over it. Uh, all these are coded. These are not out of the box. Uh, the the out of the box solutions that they give is very, very simple. Um, so yes, you can always use that. But then, uh, you know, I love to add some extra um, effects uh, to, to enhance the user experience. So when you do a project like this, 
what are you showcasing? You're showcasing that you're very interested in UX writing. You're very interested in UX design. You're interested in web design. You understand the uh, whole importance of how documentation is presented to the end user and how much it uh, builds the company's brand as to how you are uh, displaying the documentation. Now, let me come, uh, so this is a click help, but let me also show you the one that uh, this is like, a, I would not call this a portfolio. I just uh, took this up as a challenge that I wanted to build a profile. I would call this more like a, um, you know, um, a professional profile or something like that, that literally documents my journey as, uh, as an IT professional. So I won't call it exactly as a prof portfolio as such, it is more like a professional profile of mine, so that whoever looks at it knows more about me, right? So here again, this was hosted on GitHub. I did not use HTML file. I coded it uh, using HTML um, and GitHub helped me a lot to troubleshoot this one. I learned a lot from uh, W3 schools. So here you can see that uh, again, this button I designed and all the hovering part I designed, I designed all these tabs and then I have a logo. This logo also I designed on my own because there is a free website i forgot the name of the website but if you google you will get hundreds of websites like that that gives you the opportunity to design logos for free so i made this clickable that's why the mouse pointer is becoming like a hand so when i click on that it takes me uh, it is actually the home page uh, thing and when i click on this uh, see i've added a graphic my photo and about me and i made a blog here so here you can see, um, you know, the tabs are not at the top, but on the side panel. So all these, I just uh, sat, I did, I used Figma. I try to uh, see in my mind what kind of design I want for my uh, professional profile. And uh, then I uh, created its website. I inserted all the links. So all this that you're seeing in front of uh, you uh, were done through HTML coding. And here uh, I created my projects and then I created a tab called my resume. So right at the top. So here again, the user experience comes into picture. So if I want a hiring manager to come here, till here, till my resume, I don't want them to just go on scrolling, scrolling, scrolling and uh, look for um, where I can download it. Should I take a screenshot or what should I do? So there I was thinking on behalf of the user, right? So I thought when a hiring manager or HR is coming here, the easiest way for them to get a copy of what I have written here is to put a button here. So the moment you click the button, a PDF gets uh, downloaded. So you can see the PDF has got generated. So all these things were achieved through uh, my knowledge of HTML and CSS. And you won't believe this entire uh, website I created in a matter of four days and I can tell you for sure that before creating this website, I wasn't a web designer. It's just that four days, I just sat and spent hours and hours. It is not like I'm spending one hour or two hours. I just sat down and I was so determined that no, I have to learn HTML. I have to learn CSS and uh, and I just decided that I'm going to build this uh, website for myself. And uh, that's how I gathered all the knowledge that I got, um, you know, in HTML and because before this, I have done so many courses. Like I always, whenever, um, you know, I used to see a very interesting course on LinkedIn, I will just go and attend that course. Of course, all these are free courses, not paid one, but then I wasn't using it. So here is the thing about learning. 
when a trainer is teaching you, you are learning only maybe 25 to 30 percent. And then when you are implementing that knowledge in any space, so that's why I'm like again and again reiterating, please go and build your profile because whatever knowledge you will gain that you're implementing, you're using that knowledge to, um, you know, uh, for this. And um, once uh, you are able to do that, you will get a very thorough knowledge of the subject. And the next level is teaching, sharing. So now I'm sharing because I know I'm not only here, I have taught HTML coding and CSS to my entire team because I told them that, uh, you know, you have to, as long as you are in my team, you don't have a choice. At least you guys have a choice, but I didn't give a choice to my team members. I said, no, when you are going to leave this organization, I want you to be a better version of yourself. And I want you to be, um, you know, at a place where you are far ahead Head of your competitors. So um, again, coming back here quickly, these are the prompts. So when you get this presentation, just try using these prompts that uh, I have uh, given here. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that. I, by mistake, I clicked. And uh, so uh, these are the prompts that you can use to, to um, get the code for a clickable logo, card layout, accordion, and download option. And please remember, just because you are giving um, the prompt to ChatGPT, it, it is not a guarantee you will get a code that is 100% accurate. So that is the thing about ChatGPT. Even if it is giving you, um, you know, some data or some information about something, it already gives the disclaimer that I'm only an AI tool. I'm giving you this, but, you know, don't come after me if it is wrong. So that is the thing with chat GPT. But yes, these will definitely guide you a lot. So the trickiest part of the web page is the CSS. HTML is the easier side. So CSS is not only used to beautify your web page, it can add drama. You saw how the colors are changing uh, and how there is a light animation. All that is done using CSS. And respons responsiveness that I discussed, uh, making your web page device agnostic, that is also done by using CSS. And you saw how the PDF got generated. So the, uh, the PDF uh, generation is also handled by CSS. The success criteria is uh, to use ChatGPT if you want to learn and showcase your HTML and CSS skills and knowledge of uh, GitHub to the hiring manager. Um, but if you do not want all these, you do not, uh, you are telling me, okay, Mridula, I know that all these sound so cool, but uh, really I don't have time to sit and learn and do all these things. Fair enough. Uh, but portfolio is very important. So go ahead with Google site. So I will quickly show you uh, my Google site. Sorry, this is not the Google site. I'll just show you quickly. Again, this this particular website of mine, uh, as Mansi told you, that uh, I teach art uh, to adults and kids. So this is my um, website for my art school. So uh, this entire uh, website was uh, created using Google uh, Sites, and uh, in Google Sites also you can customize using HTML. And building websites in Google Site is super easy, and it gives you very cool features. You know, like you already have the accordion here. You do not have to code for all these things, and it is um, like super cool. You have beautiful templates that you can use. Uh, you just have to Google for Google site template and it will give you the uh, website for that, which you can use. So that's what I have mentioned here. And that brings us to the last slide. Um, make ChatGPT your friend, your editor, your trainer, just leverage it. What you should not make ChatGPT is something, um, you know, that you are completely dependent on. Please do not make ChatGPT that. Um, always preserve your writing abilities. Always be the jockey of this uh, racing horse. Do not let the racing horse challenge you at speed and all that thing 
coding, just leverage its speed, be your best and happy coding. So, um, Mansi, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pradila. That was very informative and uh, really, I think um, everyone must have uh, felt inspired and I'm sure people will go back and try something. Um, one thing that I would like to share with you is uh, when I was working for, for one of my friend's website, I uh, did like, help from ChatGPT and what I liked about it was that Whenever it gave me some suggestions, it also gave me the reason why they're suggesting it. Yes, the that is suggest. that is amazing, right? Like it can really train you so well. I have and my next uh, ambitious, uh, you know, as they say, big hairy audacious goal is to learn React. So I'm just trying to collect, uh, you know, talk to a lot of uh, front end builders, and that is going to be my next endeavor. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Uh, I'll just check. Uh, Pavan, uh, do we have any uh, questions uh, that anyone wants? Uh, no, not really. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let me just uh, quickly then uh, share with you all that uh, Write the Docs is uh, also looking for uh, volunteers uh, to join. Um, our uh, organization team. Uh, if anyone is interested, uh, I will share the slides. Uh, you can reach out to uh, Gayatri, Bhavan, or me on Slack and uh, just write to us and let's see. I hope you all want to. Okay, all right. Um, so, um, Rudala, thanks a lot for this wonderful session. My pleasure. Uh, it was wonderful.